So, uh, good afternoon, Ripple. So, everyone is able to hear me properly? Okay, so the talk that you will see now is uh, GoGeo with HTML5. So, what I will cover in this talk is mainly like how you can use the native geolocation capabilities that are available in HTML5 and leverage it for your application. So we'll just see what are the catchers and gotchas that you have here and what you're dealing with. Okay, so I am Jay. Okay, so I work for a little bit about me. I work as a front-end engineer at Yahoo. So I work for Yahoo Developer Network and I also do uh, yeah, evangelism of wide APIs. So and also I am an avid hacker. So so how, what strikes your mind when you see something like this? So yeah, I mean everyone knows it's latitude longitude, but what more can you infer? Location. Yeah, location and then Okay, you know that okay it's a location, fine. But who can guess which location this is? Yeah, any guesses? Any wild guesses? What this lat long corresponds to? No, <laughs> it's not this college. It's not this venue. Huh? Uh, no. So it is a location. So I'm just asking if you can guess which location this is. Because this is all you get from HTML5 geolocation API. So yeah, just prepping you up. So this is the coordinates of. The Chinnaswamy Stadium that we have where we have eight sisters and Akishne Ra really, you know, made Dada lose his head. So, yeah, how many of us use location aware uh, applications, you know, mobile phones or uh, websites? So, can you name a few? Okay, yeah. Yeah, four square. I thought that was that they were shout for square immediately when I asked that question. Okay, so most of the location aware apps generally deal with uh, what I put as ABCD, okay, current location and what are the places that you've checked in, etc. Navigation, if I'm driving from here to say Majestic uh, bus station, okay, how should I drive, etc. So position gets updated there. Then you uh, you know, pinpoint some location. Okay, these are locations of interest, points of interest, etc. So, what a typical location aware application needs to know mainly is the where of the user. Okay, so I mean, user context is a lot. I mean, you can infer a lot about the user by uh, checking and getting information of where is the user. For example, say I have. Uh, a male user in uh, say Bangalore or India and I know I can probably say that probably is interested in cricket. Okay. Some user context that I can infer out of the content that I have. The other things that matter are what's, once you know the pair of the user you can also see what's around the user, right. So once yeah, once you so okay, this user is from this location, etc. You can see what's around the user and what is suggesting some things. So typically, map applications do all of that. The how of the user is also important. Like, like I said, driving directions and how he can reach this particular point. How he can probably uh, find a gift shop on the way to a friend's birthday party, right? So. Again, I pose this question: Why geolocation is important? Okay. So now, uh, so since you have seen, you have discussed something. Can you just say why geolocation is important once you have the content? Location based on Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So I mean, if you can see, uh, based on four square chickens, uh, like uh, retail chains like Pocket Aid, they give you like, uh, okay, these are the response available here. So which uh, raises the uh, you know, participation of the user to deal and interact with the content that you have. Okay, so again, so the main thing that everything boils down to is the user context. Okay, once you get user context with geolocation, you can infer a lot of things, categorize your content accordingly and serve him a very uh, data of high relevancy. 
Okay, so user context context helps you in uh, serving out highly relevant data. And once the user finds very highly relevant data available to him and he's interacting with that content, he I mean obviously he's a happy user and that means that our application builds. So let's just see uh, just a small application. I mean how uh, what this does is like clicking on this button. Okay, ask for the user's permission to you know, that we'll see a little bit more in detail about this. So this is the current uh, latitude longitude of this place. Okay. Now let's just brush up through what the W3C geolocation specification says. And this is just a spec. Okay, it's not the implementation part of it. So you can uh, actually know what you can expect from any implementation of this specification. Okay. So yeah. So in simple words, I just browse with you. The main thing is provide whoever is using this API with uh, a lat long which is of the current position. Okay. The other thing is it also gives you information about how accurate that information is and then the user can plan, I mean the API user can plan accordingly how he can fall back on a safer content etc. The other things are position updates. Okay. I mean when the user is on the move. Uh, how you can get uh, updated positions of the user. Allow the app to register to this. So it, it doesn't, I mean, the application doesn't have to query every time that, okay, give me position updates, etc. Basically, it is asynchronously given to that application once it's registered with the API. And the main thing that uh, is sometimes a disadvantage but sometimes really useful is the user's privacy. Okay, so the user has to give uh, his or her consent about okay, I'm sharing my location and I'm safe about it. So let's just see some code here uh, about how we can expect and use this API. So this is all from the specification and all implementations are there to the specifications from. So all of the geolocation data that you find are uh, in this object or this instance from the browser. Okay, navigated or geolocation. That's what uh, you have to check for if at all the browser is uh, giving you that implementation. So you check if this object is present or not first of all when you start it. So in this. The main thing that most of the applications that you use are to get the user's current position. Okay, so the API is when I mean, you call navigator dot geolocation dot get current position. This is asynchronous. We'll see why because the information is not readily available. It has to query somewhere and get that information. So you have to provide a callback function to this uh, API. Okay. So get current position you. Uh, give you a callback and this and in that callback you handle whatever way you want. So it passes on something called position to the callback uh, function in which we will see what is present. So in that position object what you get is uh, coordinates and timestamp. So coordinate information is we will go through it but timestamp is uh, when they have collected this uh, geo data. In the coordinates uh, instance, you have latitude, longitude information which you already seen. If the device or the user agent is GPS enabled, etc., where they can actually get uh, information about what altitude the user is, etc. So it gives you altitude information, the accuracy of it, accuracy of the lat long information. And also, uh, for if there are position updates, it, I mean, it cannot, the devices can also make use of two other fields like what the speed of chain, etc. So, now um, we have seen a simple case where we assume that we are always getting successful responses, but in reality, it's not. Sometimes things fail. So, this get current position also allows you to pass something called an error callback. Okay, so you can gracefully degrade and handle if there is no location available from this uh, API. So you can 
pass a success call back and an error call back so in that error uh, call back you get a position error object returned to you in which there is a code and a message typically so the code corresponds to one of these one is unknown error maybe the network uh, through which it's getting the data is not really that good the permission denied if the user has denied the permission okay how we can so you can use this, this typically uh, in most of the cases for example say your uh, enabling location uh, to your feeds like not most of the users do it but still you get that if you get that information you will use it else you do something else right position unavailable unavailable if uh, from where you are getting this your location is not really able to infer where the lag long is if it signs off etc so these are the error conditions that it has and you can use it wise the it get current position also supports a third parameter okay which is basically allows the application to pass on uh, some more options of how i want this data so the three things that are supported right now are enable high accuracy so if uh, an application needs high accurate data only so it, and it really strives for it it can pass it as true or false if suppose you just want uh, city level information which is not that accurate right? i mean this I and mean, by default it's false so that's what you get you can also cache this uh, api so you can uh, pass on a maximum age for example say your application just wants uh, the geolocation initially and it, uh, and from there you uh, take it forward in your application you can cache it because doing a geolocation api call always is sometimes not very good and then time out as well you can specify how much it has time out Okay, so what is the timeout parameter? Yes. Yes. So you can say that if you are not getting uh, data for so much time, you pass me timeout error because okay. I don't want to wait for so long. So now we have seen how we can get the current position of a user. Right now we will see two more APIs that is from the geo location API. Uh, the main uh, this is very useful if you are uh, dealing with users who are on the move. Okay, so watch position is available in navigator.geolocation, which basically you know uh, as I said that your application can register if there are position updates. So this particular API invokes you pass it on callback functions to it, and it will invoke that callback and thereby you handle it whatever way you want. If you want, if you don't want that uh, I mean through the lifecycle of the application usage. You can stop the tracking by using a clear watch. So this watch position returns you a watch ID, okay? So which you can use to clear it. Uh, what is the frequency of of, of watch? Uh, yeah. So if the user's position is moving, like what is the what is the distance? Uh, so typically uh, we'll come to it. It also depends on what is the method of uh, getting the geolocation data. So I'll explain that. Okay. Next. So now we have seen how we can use the data, what are the API available, etc. Now we will talk a little bit about what are the geolocation technologies involved, how the browser or the device or the user agent gets the geolocation data. So the most common one is IP geolocation. Okay, so this is mostly used in all of uh, desktop based applications where we have only IP address information. Okay, so how uh, can anyone say what are the disadvantages of IP geolocation? Proxy, yeah, proxy is one thing, so it's not accurate. Uh, yeah, and it's kind of sometimes applicable to most of the cases also. But yeah, other than that, exactly. Yeah, so you can. Yeah, so for that, the other things are there. So IP geolocation, the main limitation is it can only zero down onto the city level uh, geo data. Okay, so it can say okay he is in Bangalore, okay, but it cannot really zero down onto which street he is in, etc. So you cannot really rely on that for uh, you know a driving on the move kind of an application. The other thing which is often used in non-desktop based applications 
is something called trial attrition. So I just explain you uh, in brief what trial attrition means. So it's basically like I have this position of the user. To get this position, I use data around him. Okay. So there are three ways that you can use. One is uh, GPS information, Wi-Fi. Then if it's 3G or cell phone, GPRS enabled, you get information from cell tower. Okay. So the thing is, these points are available to you. This extra metadata. So you can say, okay, these are the Wi-Fi points available around this user. I'll get the MAC ID information from this Wi-Fi routers and send it to my API. It will figure out where I am. So from two or three positions, uh, based on the signal strength, it will try to infer uh, which position of that circle or the sphere the user is. Okay, and accordingly, it will determine. Uh, um, so there is an algorithm there where it will take from where the radii <coughs> are intersecting of those circles, etc. So we'll see a little more in detail. GPS information uh, is obtained uh, only in GPS enabled devices obviously. So how this works is your device acts as a GPS receiver. It gets signals from uh, like multiple satellites uh, which pass on information like okay this is this is from where I'm sending this signal and uh, this is the speed, this is the timestamp etc. So based on the timestamp uh, information and when you project those signals, right, you can actually determine an approximation of where the user is. The disadvantages here are, I mean, if you're in a city or a closed building like this, the signals cannot really be, you know, directly to the GPS receiver. So it works really well in rural areas where you don't have too much of other possibilities like Wi-Fi or, uh, I mean, cell network. Anyway, that's where in rural areas, etc., GPS is really useful. It's fairly useful if you are uh, on the moon driving where this ragged signals can reach the device even. The other most commonly used thing is uh, Wi Fi endpoints. So, what typically the browser does is it, it sends the API what are the Wi Fi endpoints available in the vicinity, what is the signal uh, strength that I receive here, etc. So based on this, the API can calculate where is the approximation of the user. How does that work against the Wi-Fi? Huh? The Wi-Fi. Yeah, so it passes on the MAC ID. So you have that MAC ID. You can determine. Okay, it, it works through this IP. I know the IP. Yeah, but it is a little more. You can zero down a little more. Okay, so if especially in urban areas cities where you have multiple wi-fi points and uh, you can say if they are from different networks you can see how distant are they and you can uh, actually it's an approximation again so it's oh, huh? oh, so it's about practically it is about around 10 meters of difference okay that is the general delta that you get but it's fairly accurate I mean, practically, I mean, you can actually argue theoretically, probably it's not that uh, effective, etc. But if you see it practically, it works very well. Cell tower uh, signals, etc. So you have your phone, uh, GPRS, using GPRS or 3G. From the cell towers, you know, okay, these are the location of the towers and this is the signal strength you're getting. And accordingly, it will approximate your position. Here again, cell tower is not, I mean, the signals, telecommunication signals are not that reliable. But yes, in urban areas where there are lots of towers, etc., it's fairly So these are the things that you are dealing with. Now let's see how the browsers, uh, which API service it uses. Uh, Google and Chrome, sorry, Firefox and Google Chrome, they use a Google endpoint here. Okay. This is the API endpoint to which it sends one of this data, IP address or uh, GPS information uh, or the Wi-Fi MAC ID information or the cell tower uh, location information. So this kind of response back with the lag on coordinates, accuracy level, etc. Uh, whatever Apple, Safari or Opera uses is Skype Wireless. So this is a company which deals with uh, a lot of corporate information as well. It's very uh, accurate as well. So Safari and Opera use Skype wireless. IE9, Internet Explorer also uh, got into the game from IE9 onwards. 
Okay, so yeah, before that uh, they didn't really have uh, the means to get the data, etc. So for whatever reasons, but yeah, if you are dealing with browsers which are IE9 plus, you can use uh, navigator or geolocation. Again, Chrome has it from I guess uh, 10 or 12 version of it. Firefox from accurately from uh, 9, 10 onwards. Safari from 5.1 onwards, or also I think it's 9. But for if you are dealing with browsers or user agents which do not have such capabilities, like a majority of the users around the world are i6, i7, etc. We can't really leverage geolocation uh, possibilities. So locate.com gives some plugins which can be installed, which kind of simulates a geolocation capabilities. So, I mean, the thing is, there are now we are dealing with a lot of things, right? Uh, I mean, some process it works, some process it doesn't work. There are too many things, too many if else to handle. So, what instead of dealing with multiple things separately, your application should uh, always be held uh, in a hybrid manner. So, get it all in one shot, okay? So, for this, what is the best way to use? So, if you are building a large scalable application, etc., you typically use libraries, right? JavaScript libraries. So YUI, jQuery have this uh, API wrappers over it, where they kind of fall. But if say the browser doesn't have uh, navigator or geolocation available, it will fall back to contact some IP location web service uh, to get based on the IP address. So I mean that is fine. I mean then you are getting some data out of it. And you can actually organize your content and serve it accordingly. So let's just see. So in YUI, you have a gallery geo module which you can use. Uh, I mean, typically, again, as I said, the APIs are again the same and the behavior is all the same. So whatever the implementation you use is very similar. So you get the response and accordingly the coordinates, uh, object, etc. In jQuery, you can use if you have enabled that uh, geolocation. Uh, support via jQuery and get it with a similar code. Any questions at this point? Yeah, so actually cut down a few examples, but yeah, I'll show you. Uh, a very simple, if you are for, uh, using this for the first time, I'll ask you to look at uh, an example called photos near.me. So what this does is it uh, uses uh, the geolocation API and then queries Flickr to get uh, geotag photos around it. So it has been uh, written in a very, it is available on GitHub again. So it, ha it is, uh, it has been here, uh, written in a very clear cut manner so you can actually see clearly how they are handling this, how they are handling this. So to start off with you can uh, look at this application. Uh, there are also applications like uh, glimpse.com. Of course, Foursquare always they use check in kind of information, but most of them started as mobile apps, right? So, not many leveraged HTML5 geolocation uh, because it was it ever very decent. So, glimpse.com it gives it, I mean, basically, you can share your location with uh, your friends or tip on a specific person, etc. So, yeah, if you are driving to a birthday party and they are waiting for you, you can say, okay, I am at this point and it will take so much. So, they have done it very nicely with, uh, in a nice social manner. So, you can take a look, it's interesting. Yeah, but we have a lot of other uh, mobile applications which started off uh, where, so where you can actually see how we can do it. So HTML5 really broke that barrier of uh, that limitation where only GPS enabled devices uh, were used for web or mobile applications, right? So so this gives you a very uniform way of getting geo coordinated data, geo information on the user and using it for uh, Any questions that you have? Should I go for that program? Uh, 
this is uh, the example that I showed you. So the script part is uh, so it is the same. If you can see, it's basically I am just using navigator.geolocation if it's present, and I am getting the position uh, object which gives me latitude. There is nothing complex in this. It's about how you get this information and use it. So, as I said, this talk is about how you get it and what is involved with getting the data. Right? So, yeah, you can always deal it. I mean, based on the uh, error conditions, you can also see how you can gracefully degrade uh, the experience for the user. Anyone else has questions? Yeah. Okay, so navigator.geolocation again is available in an environment where HTML5 can be interpreted. It, typically it's a browser. So, if you see most uh, one since HTML5 is evolving a lot, most of the uh, native applications that you see are moving away from that. They are doing away with the native tag and using the HTML5. So, because a lot of these devices like iPads, tablets, all these are supporting HTML5 big time. So, with HTML, with the browser itself, they do it something like a launcher app type of thing where it's like it's like a bookmark kind of thing which will open up a browser and execute your code and so on. So that's how the trend is going. Okay, you you also have a lot of uh, libraries that provide you a common abstraction over uh, whatever sort of uh, nativity that you are aiming for. Uh, I mean, you, like we have uh, Moito, which Yahoo yeah, opens, so we have phone gap kind of uh, libraries, which allow you that abstraction layer, which you can actually leverage a lot. I mean, it is because all the tablets, etc., are moving really fast, HTML5 is evolving a lot, and people are starting to use those. Layers. So, if you are starting it now, I would suggest uh, you go, you don't really focus on native things unless your application really needs. Too much of uh, native API like right, Axel or native, but if it's just web content and geolocation type of app you're looking at, uh, I mean, do it as an HTML function. Uh, so, HTML5 is still under the different Yeah, it is evolving, but a lot faster. It's, uh, I mean, a lot of things which were we, we were dealing with uh, service, like for example, that IP geolocation, it has been there for quite long. It, what it does is it passes on the client IP address to so your server that you can have, uh, you can use your API or your data to get uh, an approximate location of which city is using it. So that has been there for long. Right? That limitation is going away. Now. So if you see a uh, lot of other prioritization settings where you can actually determine, I mean, the coordinate that you got, it actually will put it on the map and search it to come to right to this location. Right? So it's getting a lot uh, improved. Okay, I mean these limitations of okay, it works on some, it doesn't work on some, is slowly moving away. And if you if you see IE6 usage, which was about 70% about one and a half to two years ago, has come down a lot. It's about 30 to 40 percent in a lot of uh, countries on the internet. So that allows your web application to to do a lot. More. Right. So, I would say within, I mean, now a lot of users are using the uh, HTML5 compliant browsers. So, I don't really see that point where uh, HTML5 is still under the like, uh, control. Uh, uh, yeah, so again, uh, the other thing is what is your target user? <coughs> it also depends on that a lot. Right. Which, if you are 
typically targeting uh, the rural areas, so you may have to do this. So, probably we can talk but yeah, you have to see what your target users are, how, what is the user segment you are targeting. If most of them are like young and urban area uh, people, like they use a lot of music uh, and devices, tablets, right? So you have to leverage that a lot to be you know, complete in this space where a lot of people are. Yeah, the team address is searching for the mobile API. Uh, yeah, so what we are getting here is just latitude and latitude. We need to reverse geocode it to get a business response to this college, this location, etc. Right? So for that, uh, Google ha has really good data in uh, US, uh, India also, but it's not that great in European countries. But Nokia acquired Nartec recently, so it has uh, very good information in European countries as well and also US obviously. So in, in India Nokia is building that but Google has that Google Places API if you look at it. It is fairly very accurate if you are dealing with a lot of urban segment, right? So uh, if I am creating things like the website, it's a exclusive bank and just so for whatever if you if you just want IP level accuracy, you can use it for this. Yeah, so at that level, IP level, uh, there are a lot of uh, IP sites, APIs, which deal exclusively with the location of the IP address. Like you have free GIP or net IP locator, there are core, core, uh, there are a lot of proprietary services also which are a lot accurate. And if you are really relying on that full time, and I mean, based on what is your revenue laws, if you calculate is not good. You can, there are a lot of proprietary providers. There is IPLegions.com which provides APIs. So for IP you have a lot because it has been there for a lot of time. But it is different. But I just want to search Google Yeah, so for India especially you can use Google Places API, which is fair. Yeah, I mean they are evolving, they are all building their database again. So a lot of these people, uh, I mean since after geo tagging of content is becoming a lot bigger, and almost every company is looking to invest on geo tagging their content, etc. So uh, as I said, like in, in developed countries it's a lot better, okay. in developing countries it is fairly good, but uh, probably like maybe Map My India doesn't really provide that good idea. So it depends on your use case again. Probably if it's uh, a big revenue that you're dealing with, you can probably do it, share and content share with the members. So there are lots of things that are happening in developing this, but it's improving very rapidly. Yeah. 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 So for the browser, it knows what is the MAC address or the Wi-Fi endpoint it is uh, it, it can contact with. So the browser has that interface where it can interact with uh, the OS to get this information. So yeah, that's that's how does it switch between IP address or address? So that's what right for uh, laptops. Typically, since most of the laptops are Wi-Fi enabled and use Wi-Fi, if it is passing through a Wi-Fi endpoint, it will know it is using a Wi-Fi connection and so on. it will pass that way. If uh, it is a desktop and you are just using a LAN cable, right? So at that point, uh, if, since if you, if you are not making the lab and the device itself to use any Wi-Fi endpoint, it will rely on that IP address. So it has that logic and intelligence in place. So all these uh, browsers they have implemented the project. Yeah, so the uh, navigator.geolocation API implementation is all, I mean, text out of folders. So you needn't really worry about the production. Yeah, so. Any other questions? So I'll ask a question. If you throw a Twitter user and the post a user off a click, who will you do from first? 
Any basis? Okay. Just take a wide guess. No, <laughs> 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 what did you do? Foursquare would uh, hit the ground first. Why? Yeah, you should also say why. Take a wide guess. Yes, yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the, this is a joke. So, <laughs> Twitter user would hit the ground first because the Foursquare user would stop in midway to check in and place. So, yeah, these are uh, this is how you can contact me my GitHub, Twitter handle, etc. So, this is where I am taking a lot of that API information from the WWE specification. So, yeah, you can reach me in any of this. So, I I've given a few other talks also, you can check it out in this video. Yeah. So, thank you. Thanks a lot for attending. Yeah, since I'm wearing this t-shirt, I'll also make a point that make sure your uh, applications are accessible. Can anyone guess what is that? What is this? It's why in Braille for, for Yahoo accessibility. It's, it's a Braille uh, alphabet for you. So yeah, just to drive this point, I'm just saying, try building accessible applications. It's not just for blind user, etc. We have it for a lot of user segments. It's not very hard now with HTML5, I mentioned a lot of improved accessible capabilities. Right, thanks a lot. Use, use.